Hey folks, Adam Owens, product agronomist for Pioneer Seeds. I want to talk to you today about your options for controlling northern corn leaf blight. When we're trying to control northern corn leaf blight, timing is everything. Remember that this fungus prefers temperatures between 65 and 80 degrees during the day, and it prefers to have free water on the leaf, and that could come from rain or dew. And so if we have periods of time where these environmental conditions are present, that's when we most often see the disease occur, and that's also when we see the disease progress. So we can actually halt or prevent um, the disease from progressing by actually having uh, Mother Nature work on our side and providing us a little warmer and drier conditions. And when that dew is absent, you may not see that disease progress. When scouting for northern corn leaf blight, I like to keep four things at the top of my mind. The first is the field history. Are we corn on corn? Are we high residue situations? Do we have we had the occurrence of northern corn leaf blight in this field in prior years? Those are all important factors in within the field history that can help prioritize fields for fungicide application. The second would be the hybrid susceptibility. Um, some hybrids are more prone to northern corn leaf blight than others. The third thing I like to keep in mind when scouting for northern corn leaf blight is our growth stage. Remember that it takes 50 to 60 days to complete the grain fill process. So if we're finding this disease prior to VT, we need to be really monitoring that pathogen and weather conditions very carefully over the next few weeks because northern corn leaf blight can blow up in a field very quick. It can produce spores in as little as one week and the progression of that disease can be very, very rapid. So our approach to managing this uh, pathogen prior to or right at the VT growth stage um, should be a little bit more proactive and also more aggressive at this stage. If we meet the threshold of 50% of the plants with at least one lesion at or above the ear leaf after the VT growth stage, a strategy might be to mix a triazole fungicide, which is a curative fungicide, with a strobilurin fungicide, which is a preventative fungicide, to get through the grain fill process. Normally, as the season progresses, the weather turns off warmer and drier, and so with those environmental conditions, it can slow down the progression of the disease. Additionally, as we progress closer and closer to um, half starch line, then the need for applying a, a fungicide also decreases. If you do decide to spray, several fungicides are effective on northern corn leaf blight and also provide control for other diseases that you may be seeing out there, such as southern rust, common rust, or great leaf spot. One thing that is very important to note is that you need to read and follow label directions always. It's not recommended to add any surfactants, such as non-ionic surfactants, or any additional spray additives when spraying during or shortly after flowering, as there might be uh, interference with kernel development and you could cause arrested ear syndrome. Please reach out to your Pioneer Sales Professional if you have any questions on managing northern corn leaf flight. We're always here to help and we're with you from the word go. That concludes this Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.